Good morning. Good morning. Pray first. It is Monday and it is Memorial Day. Good morning and good morning. I'm so excited to see you guys. I hope that you are having a wonderful, wonderful, um, beautiful day here in the Mid-South. You have, um, hey, hey, Sharita. So good to see you. Good to see you in here. I um, hope you're having a wonderful morning. I don't know who all is working this morning. Hey, Patty, how are you feeling, girl? Um, hope you're getting around okay. Hope you're sleeping well. That always is the hardest part for me after surgery, it seems like, is trying to sleep. Hey, Scott, good to see you on here. Hey, Kelly, good morning, good morning, everybody. Hey, Sharon, thinking of you. Hey, Michelle, are y'all off today? Um, hey, Raymond, you holding the pond down? Are you gonna do any fishing? What's everybody doing today for Memorial Day? Hey, Tasha, are y'all grilling out? I think we are definitely grilling out. Um, we're having, um, if I'm not mistaken, steak tacos, mm, the cilantro, and yummy, 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 <laughs> stuff like that. There's, there's not a soft taco, well, street taco, let me say that. A really good street taco that I can say no to most of the time because I just love them. I just love them. Y'all like tacos, but um, y'all remember what today is? It's Memorial Day, right? And there are some families that are um, out there hurting today because they have lost a loved one um, or loved ones defending this country and giving us the freedom that we have. So. At some point today, reflect on that and be grateful and, um, you know, say a prayer for the families uh, and loved ones left here that are missing, um, missing their soldier. So, anyway, um, just thought I would put that out there, you know, have a wonderful Memorial Day. But we are in the midst and the throes of, um, of the Bible Project. We have made it all the way through the New Testament and all the way now to 1 Chronicles 10. Pastor Ann stopped there and on Friday, and I'm picking up right there, and we are about to start. But first, say hello to other people in here. Tag some friends that you would like to join the conversation with us by, by putting their, uh, their name in the comments down below. And also start the hearts and the likes if you haven't already done that with a rapid fire. Do, 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 do. Just keep going, just keep going unless you're, you know, kind of like this. I don't know how you, you know, are you a thumb person or are you a first finger person when you're doing that? Anyway, go ahead and do that. That means hello and welcome if you're a first timer in here. If you are not and you are a regular attendee, thank you so much for continuing to, to read along with us as we do this through the message version. We are about to start right now. And um, remember, this is a conversation, interactive, and we do this Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. All right, I hope this is everything that I needed to cover this morning. Oh, shall we all grab a quick drink of, co of coffee? I'm drinking a Cinnabon coffee. Highly recommend, it's really nice. I like to put cinnamon in my coffee anyway, occasionally. So anyway, there you go. Set my timer, here we go. First Chronicles, hey Ed. First Chronicles 10. The Philistines went to war against Israel. The Israelites ran for their lives from the Philistines, but fell slaughtered on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines zeroed in on Saul and his sons and killed his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua. The battle went hard against Saul. The archers found him and wounded him. Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and finish me off before these pagan pigs get to me and make a, a sport of my body. But his armor bearer, restrained by both reverence and fear, wouldn't do it. So Saul took his own sword and killed himself. The armor bearer panicked because Saul was dead and then killed himself. So Saul and his three sons, all four the same day, died. When all the Israelites in the valley saw that the army had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned their cities and ran off. The Philistines came and moved in. The next day, the Philistines came to plunder the dead bodies and found Saul and his sons dead on Mount Gilboa. They stripped Saul, removed his head and his armor, 
and put them on exhibit throughout Philistia, reporting the victory news to their idols and the people. Then they put Saul's armor on display in the temple of their gods and placed his skull as a trophy in the temple of their god Dagon. The people of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul. All of their fighting men went into action, retrieved the bodies of Saul and his sons and brought them to Jabesh, gave them a dignified burial under the oak of Jabesh, and mourned their deaths for seven days. Saul died in disobedience. Disobedient to God, he didn't obey God's words. Instead of praying, he went to a witch to seek guidance because he didn't go to God for help. God took his life and turned the kingdom over to David, son of Jesse. Chapter 11. Then all Israel assembled before David at Hebron. Look at us, they said. We're your very flesh and blood. In the past, yes, even while Saul was king, you were the real leader of Israel. God told you, you will shepherd my people Israel. You are to be the ruler of my people Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to the king of Hebron, David made a covenant with them in the presence of God at Hebron. Then they anointed King David king over Israel, exactly as God had commanded through Samuel. David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, and it was the old Jabus where the Jebusites lived. The citizens of Jabus told David, no trespassing, you can't come here. David came on anyway and captured the fortress of Zion, the city of David. David had said, the first person to kill a Jebusite will be commander-in-chief. Joab, son of Zeru Zeruah, was the first, and he became the chief. David took up residence in the fortress city. That's how it got its name, City of David. David fortified the city all the way around, both the outer bulwarks, the millow, and the outside wall. Joab rebuilt the city gates. David's stride became longer, his embrace larger. Yes, God of the angel armies was with him. These are the chiefs of David's mighty men, the ones who linked arms with him as he took up his kingship with all Israel, joining in, helping him, becoming king in just the way God had spoken regarding Israel. The list of David's mighty men. Jashoabim, Beam, son of Hakmani, was chief of the 30. Single-handedly, he killed 300 men, killed them all in one skirmish. Next was Eleazar, son of Dodai, of the Ahohite, of the big three of the mighty men. He was with David at Pasdamim, where the Philistines had mustered their troops for battle. It was an area where there was a field of barley. The army started to flee from the Philistines, then took its stand right in that field and turned the tide. They slaughtered the Philistines, God helping them a huge victory. The big three from the 30 made a rocky descent at, to David at the cave of Adullam, while a company of Philistines was camped in the valley of Rephagam. David was holed up in the cave while the Philistines were, were prepared for battle at Bethlehem. David had a sudden craving. What I wouldn't give for a drink of water from the well in Bethlehem, the one at the gate. The three penetrated the Philistine camp, drew water from the well at the Bethlehem gate, shouldered it, and brought it to David. And then David wouldn't drink it. He poured it out as a sacred offering to God, saying, I'd rather be damned by God than drink this. It would be like drinking the lifeblood of these men. They risked their lives to bring it, so he refused to drink it. These are the kinds of things that the big three of the mighty men did. Ab Abishah, brother of Joab, was the chief of the 30. Single-handedly, he fought 300 men and killed the lot, but he never made it into the circle of the three. He was highly honored, but the 30, by the 30, he was their chief. Still, he didn't measure up to the three. Benaniah, son of Jehoiada, Jehoiada, was a mighty man from Kabzeel. With many exploits to his credit, he killed two famous Moabites. He climbed down into a pit and killed a lion on a snowy day. And he killed an Egyptian, a giant seven and a half feet tall. An Egyptian, a giant, seven and a half feet tall. The Egyptian had a spear like a ship's boom, but Benaniah went at him with a mere club, tore the spear from the Egyptian's hand, and killed him with it. These are some of the things Benaniah, son of Jehoiada, did. But he was never included with the three. He was highly honored among the thirty, but didn't measure up to the three. God put David put him in charge of his personal bodyguard. The mighty men of the military were Asael, brother of Joab, 
Elhananon, son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shamath, the Herahorite, Helez, the Pelonite, Ira, son of Ikish, the Tekoite, Abiezer, the Anatholathite, Sibachai, the Hushathite, Eli, the Aohite, Maharai, the Netophithite, Peled, son of Bayanah, the Netophithite, Ithai, son of Ribai, from Gibeah, of the Benjamin, Benjaminite, Benaniah, the Pirathonite, Pirai, from the ravens of Gaesh, Abiel, the Arabithite, Asmaveth, the Baharathite, Baharamite, Eliasabah the Sha'albanite, <laughs> the sons of Hashem, the Gizanite, Jonathan, son of Shagi, the Hararite, Ahayam, no, Ahayam, son of Sakar the Haranite, Eliphal, son of Ur, Hefer, the Makarathite, Ahijah, the Pelonite, Hezro, the Carmelite, Narad, son of Ezba, Joel, brother of Nathan, that's my people right there. Joel, brother of Nathan. Love it. Mibhar, son of Hagri. Zelik, the Ammonite. Naharai, the Barathite. The armor bearer of Joab, son of Zariah. Ira, the Ithrite. Garib, the Ithrite. Uriah, the Hittite. I know that one too. Zabad, son of Ali. Adonai, son of Shiza. The Reubenite, the Reubenite chief of the thirty, Hanan, son of Micah, Jehoseph, Josephat, the Mithnite, Uzziah, the Ashtarathite, Shama and Jael, the son of Hotham, the Arathite, the Ararite, Jediael, son of Shimri, Joha, the Tizite, his brother Eliel, the Mahavite, Jerabiah and Jeshoava. The sons of Elnam, Ithma the Moabite, Eliel, Obed, and Jaisiel the Mazoabite. Wow. <laughs> I would love to just talk to these folks later. <laughs> I would love to just talk to these folks later. Wow. I'm sorry if I've butchered your name. <laughs> these are the men who joined King in the, King David in Ziklag. It was during the time he was banished by Saul, the son of Kish. They were among the mighty men, good fighters. They were armed with bows and could sling stones and shoot arrows either right or left-handed. Wow, that's amazing. They hailed from Saul's tribe, Benjamin. The first was Ahiezer, then Joash, son of Shammah, the Gibbethite, Jeziel, and Pellet, the son of Asmaveth. Barakah, Jehu, the An Anathothite, Ishma, Ishmael, the Gibeonite, a mighty man among the thirty, a leader of the thirty, Jeremiah, Jehaziel, Johanan, Josabad, the Gedarathite, Eliazah, Jeremoth, Beeliah, Shemari, Shephatiah, the Herophite, Elkanah, Is Isaiah, Azarel, Joezer, Jashobiam, the Koraiahites, and Jola and Zebediah, the sons of Jeroam from Gedor. There were some Gedites that were there who ha had defected to David at his wilderness fortress. They were seasoned and eager fighters who knew how to handle shield and spear. They were wild in appearance, like lions, but as agile as gazelles, racing across the hills. Ezer was the first, then Obadiah, Eliab, Mishmanah, Jeremiah, Ataiah, Eliel, Jonathan, no, Johanan, Elzabad, Jeremiah, and Machbani, eleven of them. These Gadites were the cream of the crop. Any of them was worth a hundred lesser men, and the best of them were worth a thousand. They were the ones who crossed the Jordan when it was at flood stage in the first month and put everyone in the lowlands to flight, both east and west. 
there were also men from the tribes of Benjamin and Judah who joined David in his wilderness fortress. When David went out to meet them, this is what he said. If you have come in peace and to help me, you are most welcome to join this company. But if you have come to betray me to my enemies, innocent as I am, the God of our ancestors will see through you and bring judgment on you. Just then, Amasiah, chief of the 30, moved by God's spirit, said, We're on your side, O David. We're committed, O son of Jesse. All is well, yes, all is well with you, and all's well with whoever helps you. Yes, for your God has helped and does help you. So David took them on and assigned them at a place under the chiefs of the raiders. Some from the tribe of Manasseh also defected to David when he started out with the Philistines to go to war against Saul. In the end, they didn't actually fight it because the Philistine leaders, after taking it over, sent them home saying, we can't trust them with our lives. They'll betray us to their master Saul. The men from Manasseh who defected to David at Ziklag were Adnah, Josabad, Jediel, Michael, Josabad, Eliehu, Zilathai, all leaders among the families of Manasseh. They helped David in his raids against the desert bandits. They were all stalwart fighters and good leaders among his raiders. Hardly a day, hardly a day went by without men showing up to help. It wasn't long before his band seemed as large as God's own army. Here are the statistics on the battle-seasoned warriors who came down from the north to David at Hebron to hand over Saul's kingdom in accord with God's word. From Judah, carrying shield and spear, 6,800 battle ready. From Simeon, 7,100 stalwart fighters. From Levi, 4,600, which included Jehoadiah, no, Jehoadiah, leader of the family of Aaron bringing 3,700 men and the young stalwart Zadok with 22 leaders from his family. From Benjamin, Saul's family, 3,000, most of whom had stuck it out with Saul until now. From Ephraim, 20,800 fierce fighters and famous in their hometowns. From the half-tribe of Manasseh, 18,000 elected to come and make David king. From Issachar, men who understood both the times and Israel's duties, 200 leaders with their fami families, from Zebulun, 50,000 well-equipped veteran warriors, unswervingly loyal, from Naphtali, 1,000 chiefs leading 37,000 men, heavily armed from Dan, 28,600 battle-ready men, from Asher, 40,000 veterans, battle-ready, and from east of Jordan, men from Reuben, Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh, heavily armed, equaled 120,000. All these soldiers came to David at Hebron, ready to fight if necessary. They were both united and determined to make David king over all Israel, and everyone else in Israel was of the same mind. Make David king. They were with David for three days of feasting celebration with food and drink supplied by their families neighbors ranging from all as far north of, as Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali, arrived with donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen, loaded down with food for the party, flour, fig cakes, raisin cakes, wine, oil, cattle, and sheep. Joy in Israel. We're going to stop there. I think that's quite appropriate that they're celebrating and being thankful and you know, bringing all kinds of food and all that kind of stuff, because here we are at Memorial Day, a time where we um, have a day off from work and, um, you know, take time to remember those who have uh, given the ultimate sacrifice um, for this country. And um, I still believe that our country is the best. And, um, you know, I'm grateful to all of those that who have their families that um, they're missing um, a relative today and every day, actually. But um, let's pray, you guys. And I um, thank you for joining with me today. But Lord, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for um, that you even said that there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for um, his friends. And Lord, I thank you that um, we have had so many 
that have done so um, defending this country and defending the freedoms and the liberties that we have. Um, and, and Father, I thank you that, um, that all of that comes from you, you know, that it is your intention to, to give freedom, Lord, and to, for us to be free. And, um, Lord, just be with all the families that are missing someone today and, um, whether they died in battle or served our country and, 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 you know, passed away later, Lord, I thank you for their service. I thank you for their, um, their courage and their bravery to do so. And, um, Lord, just give their families peace and, um, joy and just have time to remember their loved ones. And Lord, as we, um, grill burgers and hot dogs and ribs and, and for us, beef tacos, you know, um, Lord, just help us to enjoy family and to spend time together and to remember, um, that we're not promised tomorrow and to enjoy the time and be present where we're at, Lord. Father, thank you so much for your love and thank you for each person that's here right now hearing my voice and hearing this prayer. Lord, let them feel your presence in a real way today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hashtag live, hashtag shared, hashtag recorded. I encourage you to get this out on your page. Consider liking the Pastor Doug um, Bell page if you haven't already and invite others to do so. There should be a little invite button that you can do that. Also, um, this weekend is Go Out. Go Out Sunday. I'm super excited. Do believe we're meeting at the church first. And then we are going to go out and serve our community, which is one of the most amazing times that we have at our church. If, you've if you're local and you've never participated, we would love to have you. Um, and we're doing that this Sunday. We will not be in-house actually having a in-service where we come in and refresh and repent and rejoice and all of those R's, but um, we will be going out, breaking down the walls of the church and going out and uh, serving our community, letting them feel and receive love as we're being trying to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please try to come if you can. That would be super awesome to see you there. I would love to say hello and serve with you. Um, is there anything else I want to say? Oh, I encourage you to also just put out there, you know, um, thank you to, to all of the, the servicemen out there, the families of the servicemen and women that have uh, given their life, you know, let's honor them, those families and, um, to remember Memorial Day today. Um, okay. I think that's it. All right. Love you guys. Have a wonderful day.